Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you're watching from. I'm continuing with the reading of my book, You Are. Last week I read chapter one. And straight ahead today, I'm going to be reading chapter two of the book I wrote. My first book, You Are, is the title. So, You Are, chapter two. You are God's battle axe. Bible prophecies and their fulfillment are accurate. Both Old and New Testaments repeatedly say this is proof of genuineness and inspiration of the scriptures, as well as a vital form of guidance. Many of these prophecies deal with war. Not only of the wars of the wicked against us, but also with our duty to have our part in God's war against the wicked. There is no pacific in the Bible. Only under God's personal government of the world can there even be peace. I want to de de delve into the matter of our duties in the meantime in the imperfect world you are God's battle axe. God knew that we must defend ourselves against the wicked he promised his help at the, this time of conflict Deuteronomy 23 so four tells us here O Israel you approach this day unto battle against your enemies let not your heart faint fear not do not tremble neither be ye terrified because of them for the Lord your God is he that goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 25 God said this day will I begin to put dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heavens who shall hear report of thee and shall tremble because of thee repeatedly God tells us you shall not fear them for Jehovah is your God, he shall fight for you. To get the greatest protection, we must obey God. In Leviticus chapter 26, from verse 6 to 8, it says, If you walk in my status and keep my commandments and do them, I will give peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and no shall make you afraid. And I will read evil beasts out of thy land. Neither shall the sword go through your land. And you shall chase your enemies. And they shall fall before you by the sword. And leave. And five of you shall chase a hundred. And hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. And your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. Let there be no doubt about this. God is a God of peace to those who love and obey him. However, to the wicked who try to overthrow all his rule in the world, he is a man of war. As Exodus chapter 15 verse 3 states, and Psalm 24 verse 8 states, Who is this King of glory? Jehovah strong and mighty. God mighty in battle. David said, It is God that has guarded me with strength and maketh my ways perfect. He teaches my hand to war so that a bow of steel is broken by my arm. 
For thou hast guided me with strength unto the battle. Thou hast subdued under me those that rose up against me. Hallelujah. In First Samuel chapter 1 verse 18, records, David required from the Lord that the men of Judah be taught to use their bow. There, are, there was more to this than just the mere defense of ourselves against direct attack. It is our job to be God's policemen in this world. And we must readily, willingly, and able to do this. In Jeremiah 51 verse 20, God gives us all the saying, Thou art my battle axe and weapon of war. For with thee will I destroy kingdoms. God will use his great power to see that we are victorious. However, we can hide under the bed at home while he walks his walk. Why he walks his walk. We must do our part with absolute confidence in his protection. In Isaiah 54, verse 15 and 17, God says, Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather against thee shall fall for thy sake. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of God, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Remember, keeping the world in order is doing God's work. So we must do it, for he has said, we shall. If we decide that we are so much more righteous than God, that we can make our own rules and say and surrender to evil is better than enforcing right. Then we should remember the terrible warning in Jeremiah 48 verse 10. Cause be he that does the work of God negligently. Cause be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. To be the instrument in God's hand by which he brings righteousness and justice into an unwilling world is an honor. And that is what God calls it. In Psalms 149 verse 5 to 9, it says, Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance upon the hidden and the punishment upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written this honor have all his sins. Praise ye the Lord. At this point, I can see some of you protesting that this is from Old Testament. You think God was all wrong or all of this was done away with by New Testament? I have a surprise for you. God was right. He didn't have to change his mind or be taught higher ethics by men. In Matthew chapter 10 verse 34, God says, Think not that I have come to send peace on earth. I have come to, I have not come to send peace, but a sword. In Luke chapter 22, verse 36, God told his disciples, He that has no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. God didn't have to change his mind either. In Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, we read, this is about him. And I saw heavens open, and behold, a white horse. 
and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he does judge and make war peace never comes by cooperation with satan or satan's children and followers you can't coexist with cancer neither you must cut out completely as it will kill you but cannot survive therefore the peace prince of peace must be in complete control over a world which evil has been driven out from only then can the word of malachi 4 1 to 3 be fulfilled for in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of god shall be established in the top of the mountain and it shall be exalted above the hills and the people shall flow into it and many nations shall come and say come and let us go unto the mountain of god and to the house of god of jacob and he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his path for lo shall you go forth of zion and the word of god from jerusalem and he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations of afar off and they shall beat their sword into plowshare and their spears into pruning hooks nations shall not lift up sword against nations neither shall they learn war anymore it is done only by the might of god therefore we read how this will be done in isaiah 66 from 15 to 16. for behold god will come with fire and with his chariots like a wild wind to render his anger and fury and his rebuke with flames of fire for by fire and by his word we God plead with all flesh and the slain of God shall be men. Whether we like it or not, God has said to us, Thou art my battle axe and weapon of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nation, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. Those who serve God willingly receive the reward but willingly or unwillingly we must obey him if we obey the laws of god and follow confidently where he leads we may be sure of his blessing one of these is five of you shall chase a hundred and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight when god says that you are his battle axe He's saying you are his weapon of warfare. He intends to fight battles with you and through you. A battle as is anything in the hand of the warrior that is capable of accomplishing a victory. So God is saying with you in his hand, he can make progress. You can make advances. You can defeat your adversary. You can be effective in God's hands. Thou art my battle axe and weapon of war. For with thee I will break in pieces the nation. And with thee I will destroy the kingdoms. And with thee I will break in pieces the horses and his rider. And with thee I will break in pieces the chariot and his rider. And with thee I will break in pieces man and woman. And with thee I will break in pieces old and young. And with thee I will break in pieces the young man and the maiden. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and the flock. And with thee I will break in pieces the husband man and his yoke of oxen. And with thee I will break in pieces captain and rulers. God is a warrior. The man of war is his name. Every warrior goes to battle with weapon of warfare. 
trusted, effective, and reliable. No warrior ever goes to battle without his weapon. No matter what it is, there must be something with which the warrior hopes to fight. God announces you as his battle axe. He is saying you are his weapon of warfare. He intends to fight battles through you. A battle axe is anything in the hand of the warrior that is capable of bringing down the enemy. So God is saying with you in his hand, he can bring down any enemy. Think about Moses. When he was to go to Egypt to bring up the children of God, God told him, I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. In Exodus chapter 7 verse 1, And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. This will mean that whatever God will have done by himself to Pharaoh, he will do it through Moses. Pharaoh did not see God, but he saw God's power walking through Moses. People should see the power of God in you as a child of God. The world is a battlefield and it is a place of darkness. Many Christians have died untimely because they refuse to be the battle ask of God. Today, beloved, you have the opportunity of making the choice of becoming God's battlers and not staying aloof. The enemies of God are the archangels of God's children. And usually when you cannot get a man, you make his children your next target. As a good ass, you must be swift, sharp, strong, and powerful. God expects every Christian to be his battle act, which he will use in destroying the kingdom of darkness. The devil is aware of this fact, so he is vigilant. He knows the Christians that are not useful and cannot function as razor blades, let alone being a battle act for the Lord. That is why the seven sons of Scaphus suffered in the hand of a man that was possessed of evil spirits. You can read that in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, from 13 to 16. Some Christians are toy in the hands of the devil. Wherever, that is not the will of God. The devil is occupied 24 hours of the day and he fires arrows at people day and night. You do not need to fold your arms and see the devil and his agents succeed. We need to fight our good fight of faith. The characteristics of a battle axe. One, must be smart. We as battle axe, we must be smart. What makes you smart as a child of God is the word of God. When the word of God is rich in you, you will be a smart, effective ax in God's hand. The word of God can cut in pieces anything it lands upon. With the word of God, you can bring into captivity everything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. Hebrews 4 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even into the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a designer of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void without producing any effects use unless useless, but it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall prosper in the things which I have sent it. Isaiah 55 verse 11. 
James chapter 1 verse 21. It says, So get rid of all uncleanness and all and rampant outgrowth of wickedness and in, and in a humble, gentle, modest spirit, receive and welcome the word which implants and rooted in your heart contains the power to save your soul. Every scripture is God breathed given by his inspiration and is profitable for instruction, for reproof and conviction of sin, for correction of error and discipline in obedience and for training in righteousness, in holy living, in conformity to God's will, in thought and purpose and action. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. The second attribute of a battle axe. Two, you must be rust free. As battle axe, you must not get rusted. Otherwise, it becomes blunt and will not be able to chop anything. Rust in the life of a Christian could be in many forms. Any action of worldliness leads to impurity and hinders person from prospering in the things of God. Some of the impurities include in, uh, sin, disobedience against the word of God. Either spoken or written will make the acts to be blocked. Addiction to food, sleep and drugs can make your act blocked. Pride. When you allow what you have to get into your head and you can run yourself blunt as God's battle act. Inordinate love for the opposite sex. Many people started on the right track with God but fell out because of this sin. Solomon was lured away from God by strange women and he sinned against God. Something was prophesied into being and he was a special child dedicated unto God. He was powerful but gave himself up to a strange woman who destroyed, betrayed him and he died with his enemies. Anyone that is not pure in his or her heart and deed is not worthy of being a battle axe in the hand of God. The eyes of God cannot behold sin and he cannot share his children with this world and the devil. Number three, a battle axe must be processed by fire. A battle axe is made from metal for it, it goes through its shape. Its metal smith puts the metal in the fire and hits hard on it. It sharpens it. So also, all human beings are in the hands of God. If you must become God's battlers, passing through fire becomes not negotiable. Passing through fire might not be pleasant. In the end, it makes a person a better vessel. Passing through fire could be trials, temptations, hardship, and so many other things. Sometimes a person passes through fire without knowing why until God promotes him or her. A person could be a battle lance and then become blunt. He or she could be rendered invalid if he or she are not careful. The person's story will now be in those days. They will say, in those days, I used to be this, I used to be that. Why does God want you to be a battle axe? The answer is in the question ab above, could be found in Jeremiah 51, verse 20 to 25. One, one of the reasons, to break nations into pieces. Number two, to destroy the kingdom of darkness. Number three, to destroy demonic agents. 
Number four, to destroy satanic principalities and powers and their principles and their practices. Except you are a battler in the hand of God, you cannot do the above mentioned things. Being God battlers take more than church attendance. You have to start from the starting point, which is an encounter with the Lord, before you can grow and groom yourself into being useful and usable in God's hand. Keep yourself smart at all times. Remember, if the iron be blunt and does not do what it's supposed to do, then must he put to more strength, but wisdom is profitable to direct. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10. Be God's battle apps from now on. We declare war. We declare war. Jesus has ascended and given to us his authority. Luke 10, 10. Luke 10, 19. I have given you authority to trample upon snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the powers of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. And his charge in Luke 19, 13. Occupy till I come. God has fashioned you, his battlers, you, his weapon of righteousness. The power of the Holy Spirit has announced his power and his point, and you are about to bruise Satan under your feet shortly. These are two men destined to house the fullness of God, Jesus Christ and his church. God's battlers. God's battlers. That is the end of the reading of You Are chapter 2. I pray by the mercies of God that we rise up and become God's battle as the weapon of God's warfare. God bless you. We'll meet again next week as we continue to read the book you are and I believe the Lord will keep blessing us. God bless you. Love you all. Bye for now. Thank you.